Well, let's talk about TRP fixing in India's news business. A couple of days ago, the Mumbai police came out with some startling claims. According to them, certain channels were involved in manipulating TRPs, which are television rating points. Now, this is a metric which is used to determine which channels are the most watched in the country. And it's the basis on which channels and their editors keep shouting about how they're the most popular. The way these ratings are calculated is with devices called barometers, which are kept in select households anywhere between 30,000 to 40,000 such devices in the country. And these barometers collect data on which channels are watched and how much. So if those whose houses in which these devices are installed can be paid off, it's possible to manipulate these ratings. The fraud was reportedly first brought to light by the Broadcast Audience Research Council, that is BARC, which releases these ratings, and Hansa, which was contracted by BARC for the research. At least two of those arrested in connection with this are former Hansa employees. The other two arrested are owners of two channels, Fuck Parati and Box Cinemas. Now, the big fish the Mumbai police mention is Republic TV. This channel has denied these claims and said that another channel was originally named in the FIR. But amid all this uncertainty, what is clear is that there is a lot of murky stuff and that this is not something we started just yesterday. We talked to senior journalist Anindya Chakravarti, who has been studying and analyzing this issue for years. Anindya, thank you so much for joining us. So it seems that we have a case of TRP fixing again over here. And yeah. uh, of course, there's been a lot of uh, debate, controversy, a lot of allegations being thrown by some of the people supposedly involved. But uh, to take a slightly more, to take maybe a couple of steps back, uh, is this kind of TRP fixing something that's unheard of or has it been, is it a regular thing which is just coming out right now at this crucial moment? You know, I, if I remember correctly, Outlook magazine, I might be wrong, Outlook magazine did a story sometime in the early 2000s mm -hmm. on uh, how uh, uh, people were being paid, mm -hmm. those who had meters. In those days, it used to be TAMP. Right. right, television audience, audience metering or something. That's what the company was called. Mm -hmm. And they were being paid by channels to watch certain channels and push up there. So this is a very old thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, network I work for, NDTV, we have been uh, we had been regularly raising this. And NDTV uh, realized that there's no law in India which can stop this from happening. And so it went to New York, which is where the parent company of, uh, uh, of TAM at that time in India was uh, there, which is Nil Nielsen and Cantor Media, I think. And uh, it filed a case in New York where the judge said that this is not within our jurisdiction. You'll have to take this to India. And uh, uh, that those case uh, papers, actually, I am part of that because I was one of the people who used to analyze ratings to find out where this kind of rigging is going on. This has been consistently happening way before Republic TV was ever born. Right. So Absolutely. all those who are crying foul and they're basically all part of this game. Let us be right. very clear about it. Absolutely. Right. So, but just to sort of give our viewers a more concrete understanding, could you just take us through the mechanics of how this kind of tampering works? So let's first understand how uh, television ratings are collected, right? So you have a... Uh, there are 44,000 meters in India and what I could make out from the Bark website, uh, 40,000 are, are actively on their panel, which is from where they take data con uh, every second, right? Uh, where the data is recorded every second and I think there is a GSM network through which without visiting the home, they can collect the data into their office through a phone. Now, how does it happen? There is a uh, meter, which they call the borrow meter or the people meter, and for each uh, meter, there are each person in the household has a button, right? So at least that was the old system. Maybe Tam has changed it, but on Tam's website, where I read the uh, technology, it seems to be something similar. So if let's say uh, uh, you and I are uh, flatmates, right? So we'll have two buttons and Every time we come into the room and we are watching actively, we'll have to press our button. And every time we leave, we'll have to also press. Now, how does TAM make out that what we are watching, it is possible. You know, you remember in the old cable days, your channel used to switch from one number to another and you would have to find it again. Right. So there is an audio record being taken. So they're looking at, they're actually tracking not just the picture, but they're tracking the sound of the channel. At the back end, they have, they're tracking all these channels and they're matching the audio to see whether right. this is the channel. Right. So that is the way they can make out who mm -hmm. watches being watched, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Uh, 
So, uh, Prashant, we all know and we've discussed this in the past that people watch entertainment much more than news. Right? And this is not anything new in India. It is true across the world. And the less, uh, let's say, the less capitalist uh, country is, interest in news is lower. Right? Because the idea of news itself has some connotation with markets and being informed to be a citizen. If you don't value that, if that is not part of your social value system, there's no reason for you to watch news. So a lot of people actually watch entertainment much more than news, right? So let's uh, now take the case of something like, uh, let me take a, like a channel like Star Plus, for instance, right? Which is a, a frontline uh, Hindi general entertainment channel. If I look at that, then every day, out of those 40,000 meters which are active, uh, about 8 odd percent, which is about 3,000 odd uh, meters, actually are actively watching Star Plus. Only Star Plus. I'm not watching talking about Hindi right. entertainment. Because Hindi entertainment would be watched by about 48% of all sample viewers. By sample viewers, I mean the people who are in meter homes, right? Which is about 1.7 lakhs, 1.6 to 1.7 lakhs. Right now, here's the point that uh, Star Plus, if it went to 50 such meter homes, now meter homes is supposed to be completely confidential. You're not supposed to know, right? Which is why in your family, if you have anyone who works in a channel or has anything to do with a channel or whatever, then that family household cannot have a meter. The problem is that these meters homes constantly get leaked. It's not that difficult. You can actually, you don't even have to bribe the uh, people who put the meters. You actually have to bribe a cable operator. Mm -hmm. Because the cable guy goes to uh, collect the, the money, monthly money. Uh, they sometimes go to fix. If the connection is poor, they'll go to fix. And they'll see what the hell is on this TV set. They know there's a meter there, right? right. So it's not very difficult for you to find out where those meters are. Now, uh, Suppose you went to a household which has a meter, right? First of all, before that, I want to ask you a question, Prashant. Would you allow uh, Bark to set up a meter in your home and tell you that every day, every time you watch, uh, that everyone in your family, when you watch, you have to press a button. When you stop, go out of the room, you must press the button and leave. When you come in, you must press the button. And will you not. do it? Probably not. So every person in every channel, every channel has a distribution person who right. looks at whether these channels are being reached, right, connected. Everyone will tell you that even the households which are supposedly telling you about the richest people, right, which is called NCCS, uh, uh, which is the new category they use, A, right? Earlier we used to call it socioeconomic category, SEC, now it's called NCCS. I've forgotten what the thing is, some consumer, something category, right? Uh, even those which say are the affluent, in affluent areas are actually put in the staff quarters. Okay. Because no middle class household is going to allow you to put a meter in your house. It's right. not going to happen, right? So this is what invariably happens. In any case, let's come back to the issue. Now, uh, it has been repeatedly found in stories done by reporters in sting operations. NDTV did a few sting operations as well. What happens is that in a in a person who is a uh, poor poor household, right? Let's say in Dharavi or in Shadra, which are, which has a meter, right? And uh, a channel goes and says that here is a brand new forty eight inch Samsung TV for you. Here is a Tata Sky or whatever connection, Dish TV connection. You watch whatever you want to watch on this brand new TV. And here is 500,000 rupees per month for your additional expenses like electricity or whatever. This other TV on which the meter is connected, please make sure it watches my channel for five hours a day. Right. And also make sure all four or five people in your family press the button. Right. So on the face of it, a person who doesn't speak English, right, uh, probably doesn't earn enough, their entire family is watching English news, mm -hmm. sitting in Dharavi, because they've just switched it on. Right. They've got another TV given nicely by the channel for them to watch. 
Now you will say, does it make a big difference? Now, here are some calculations uh, that might be interesting to look at, right? If you have, uh, let's say, 50 such homes, again, uh, just to be sure that the viewers remember, do you remember, Prashant, how many uh, meters did I say in the in all over India? 40,000. Correct. So 40,000, right? I take 50 such meters across India and I go there and I say that here is a TV set. You watch whatever you want to watch on it. This is a, on your meter TV set. All of you must switch this on my channel for 300 minutes a day. If that happens, a Hindi general entertainment channel, its ratings would move up. If it had 20% market share, it will go to 21.5%. Yes, but we're talking about, say, just a difference about one and a half percent here. So, which is actually on the face of it, quite a small number. So, what difference does it exactly make in the real world, as you said? So, Prashant, what it, the difference it makes is that you can move actually from number two to number one and then get a leadership premium. If you actually can sustain it for six months, you will end up with, uh, you know, 50, 60, 70 or even more uh, money, uh, crores. By, I don't mean 50, 60 rupees. <laughs> I mean crores annually, right. which is a lot of money. If we take that for a Hindi news channel, for instance, and if I look at the numbers as to what happens, the same 50 boxes, you manipulate uh, for about five hours each person every day, 50 boxes, which is about 210 people, your ratings go from 20% to almost 26%. And that put, pushes you from number, let's say, three to number one. Exactly. Of course, the race is much tighter here. A number three person would probably be at 15, 16 percent, but they will be pushed up to 20 percent, right? And that will put them at number one. And that again is 50, 60 crores annually if you can sustain it. Exactly. If you look at English news, this is the interesting part 50 meters, 210 people, ask them to watch for five hours a day. If you had a 20 percent market share, Prashant, I would ask you to guess where you would end up. Say around 30 percent? No. Not 30%. Uh, it's 79%. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you would have nearly 80% of the market right. because the market is so small. Right. A total of about 450 individual sample individuals watch English news every day. And that is projected for the entire universe. All right. 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 So you can imagine what rigging uh, 210 more people will do to your ratings. Now let's look at 10. You say 50 is difficult, 50 all over India. You could get caught and Bark has its own vigilance team. If they catch you, then you're blacklisted. There could be more things that can happen to you. Uh, Hindi general entertainment, if you have 10 boxes doing the same thing, 10 boxes would meters would be about 50, 42 people on an average. You'll go up by just 0.3. So it just doesn't make sense. Hindi news, you'll go from 20 to 21%, which is a decent number again, because you can move from number two to number one, right. right? And that fight can get tough, tougher. English news, just 10 such meters moves you from 20% to 49%, right? These I'm basing, basing on the last 13 weeks of data for the leading channels, 20% right. to 50%. That is what happens by rigging just 10 meters across India out of 40,000 meters. Right. That is the impact. Right? Absolutely. And this impact is twofold. One, you can basically capture the entire market. And you can say that if the total uh, revenue of English for available for English news is, let's say, 500, 600 crore, uh, I should be getting 200 crore out of that. Right? Mm -hmm. You have amazing clout based on that. More importantly, Prashant, is the impact on content. Right? <clears throat> now, you could ask me how can content be affected? If someone, if one channel is gaining, how does it affect others? Because we know that everyone is looking for ratings and they, when they see that, okay, this channel at 90, 99 o'clock is getting 80% of the ratings. What have they been doing? What have they been showing? Well, they've been showing Sushant Singh Rajput. That means everyone wants to watch Sushant Singh Rajput, right? Exactly. So this has a bandwagon effect. Everyone moves to Sushant Singh Rajput. They don't get the ratings, right? Because we're seeing that those guys still are at low ratings. It makes no difference to the rating, but they think they dare not move away from it because they say, if we move away from it, then we are out of what people want to watch. Exactly. Right? Absolutely. So you can actually determine by this method 
push other channels to do what you are doing and basically move from media to godi media right. by simply right. manipulating this absolutely so it's an interesting question here is that how come there are absolutely no checks and balances on this since the point of failure seems so uh, easy no there are checks and balances mm -hmm. there are checks and balances for instance as i said that if uh, if uh, bark has its own algorithms and its uh, things which will see that if suddenly in a place in dharavi where people were watching for 10 minutes they're watching for 300 minutes they're going to come and check it sooner or later and right. they are going to remove those what are called outliers from the system right. they will do that tam notoriously uh, even after pu pushing and prodding failed to do it mm -hmm. they also have a vigilance team which actually goes and checks what is happening and in fact i think the mumbai police was claiming i don't know whether that is true uh, that some of this uh, the initial complaints actually came from bark itself Right. They did the investigation. I don't know whether that is true, whether the, I, what I'm saying, whether I've understood it correctly. Right. But Bark does do this regularly. The point is that there's an entire network of what is called consultants who are rigging meters all the time. Right. So they'll tell you that, give me this much money. I will get you. This is your guarantee rating. You'll see that one week you are number one in Chennai. Next week, you're number one in Calcutta. Next week, you're number one in Bangalore because they have the entire system. Right. Bark is unable to, you know, put, uh, there are holes all over, right. right? So for it to darn and sew every part of that fabric, mm -hmm. it is not that easy. Absolutely. So as long as there is a system where, as long as channels are going to be able to, uh, you know, manipulate it, mm -hmm. this is going to happen. You can't get out of it. Right. And so that, like you said, this basically... Uh, ends up not being just a question of ratings or even money for that matter, yeah. but the fundamental question about journalism itself. So, absolutely. Uh, do you see any possibility of, uh, say, I mean, at the risk of sounding a bit naive, do you see any possibility of, say, content slash or any way of moving out of this kind of rat race? Are there any alternative methods used in other parts of the world, for instance, which no. kind of go beyond this? I, my answer to that is no as of now, because I'll tell you why. Because People do say that, let's look at uh, digital. And yesterday, I had actually tweeted two uh, frames at the same time, Ravish at 9 o'clock on NDTV India and Republic India, Bharat, which is the Hindi channel, which uh, whose ratings I would uh, think is 10 times that of NDTV India. And at 9 o'clock also probably 10 times. But in terms of all, number of people watching at the same time on YouTube, Ravish at 9 o'clock had 35, 36,000. And uh, Republic Bharat had 23 odd thousand. So you can see that if, if that were the market, then 60% would be Ravish and uh, Republic Bharat would be 40%. I'm just giving a naive right. rough calculation. However, 35,000 is no patch on the number of people who tune in to Hindi news at nine o'clock even if it were 1% of the 84 crore people who have the, it would still be 85 lakh rupees uh, people per minute, right. every minute. I'm not talking about, uh, so when we say, if you went to YouTube and saw a video which has 85 lakh views over six months, you will say, oh my goodness, that is an amazing video, right? right, right. I'm talking about per minute here, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the difference in the kind of reach television has. So advertisers will obviously always be uh, keen to go to these channels. And as long as the Indian viewer is like that, and why Indian viewer? viewers across the world are like that, right. advertising is, this is inbuilt in capitalism. We right. need to understand that. It would Absolutely. be naive and utopian for us to believe mm -hmm. that capitalism is going to allow journalism, which questions it. Right. right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Absolutely. That's right. Great. Sure. Thank you so much, Anandya, for talking to us. Thanks, sir. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from the country and the world. Until then, keep watching NewsClick.